Not on a Sunday. Hello there. Hello. Excuse me. Oi, <whistles> Herbert. What can I do for you? Nothing, thank you. I'm looking for Gracie Fields. Hey, here. Me. I'm Gracie Fields. Yes, you're Gracie Fields. You really had me fooled there for a moment. I'm Monty Banks. Montague Banks, motion picture director, Hollywood. The best. Surely you've been told about me. I don't like doing motion pictures, I'm afraid, Mr. Banks. I can't stand the sitting around. But you've never made a picture with Monty Banks. I know. What a shame. Goodbye, Mr. Banks. The compulsory husband? No. Almost a honeymoon? Falling in love? No, I've never seen any of them. I don't have much time to go to the pictures. And you don't like the sitting around? Exactly. But there's no sitting around with Monty Banks. I can see that. Miss Fields, I've seen all your movies. Oh, don't worry. I'm not so keen on them either. And I can tell you're having no fun. The camera cannot lie. With Monty Banks, it is always fun, fun, fun. The films pay for my bills, that's all. Oh, Mr. Banks! Are you all right? Did you know I was one of the Keystone Cops, Miss Fields? You. I've worked with Fatty Arbuckle, Max Sennett, Harold Lloyd, and now I want to work with you. I can make Gracie Fields an even bigger star than she is already. Well, I suppose you better come in for a cup of tea. The most popular distinction in the New Year's honors list is, of course, for our Gracie. Here she is on her way to Buckingham Palace to collect her CBE for services to entertainment. A crowd braves the cold outside to catch a glimpse of her. Shall we show the lads, Mother? Oh, it's beautiful, yes. Yeah, lads. Her latest picture, Queen of Hearts, shows just how deserved the honour is. Thousands of eager fans turned up for the opening of what is sure to be another box office hit. Our gal from Rochdale is unstoppable, working harder than ever to keep the nation smiling. Here she is on set with Monty Banks, the Hollywood director who shot her fame transatlantic. From CBE to highest paid actress in the world, is there no end to what our Gracie can do? says you are a fighter, so... so... Keep fighting. I worked you too hard on that bloody film. And all the time you are ill. Gracie. There's something I've been wanting to tell you. Gracie. I... Still an out. 
Come on, Grace. The whole country's praying for you. I want to thank you all again a thousand times for the great love and affection you have shown for me. And thank you, Mr. BBC. Good night. And God bless you all. How my bloody fingers. Monty, you daft pie can. Put the lights back on. Pa, I didn't do anything. It's a power cut. Everyone must have put their. Kettle's on for a nice cup of tea. Always me, him, wherever you go. Have you dropped something? What are you looking for? I know nothing. Was I all right? You were wonderful. <laughs> Roberts, I was very, very happy to receive your letter of good wishes and do thank you so very much for your kind offer to send me some kippers. Buckingham Palace, look. I recognise the envelope. It's the same as the CBE. Unfortunately, I shall be going to Italy to convalesce later today and I'm not sure that kippers will survive the passage to the Isle of Capri. I do hope you know what you're doing flitting off to a foreign country. Shush, Mama. I hope to be returning to these shores fit and well in the near future. By which time I'm sure I shall be desperate for a kipper, since I won't have had one since the last lot you sent. Bye, gum. They were extra. Well? What do you think? Is that one for you? I've told you, Harry. I'm not looking for new songs. I'm giving this old voice a rest. That lovely surgeon told me to take two years off. Two years? What does a surgeon know about show business? I've never known you take more than two days off. How on earth are you going to amuse yourself for two whole years? This is a new start, Harry. A new life now. I've worked these old bones into the ground. But the good Lord has seen fit to give me another chance. So, Monty's here. You're not going to let him see you looking like that, are you? You look like death warmed up. Well, that's exactly what I am, isn't it? Oh, you can be very coarse, Grace. Yeah, well... Just don't count on me having any songs left for you when you return. <laughs> Goodbye, Harry. Good morning. Oh, not more post. No, I met Santa Claus on the stairs. Ah, no lifting, no carrying. This goes straight to Mary. She can deal with it while you are away. Is this you? That's better. I see it now. Where's your wave set? I don't know. You probably packed it. I get off me fan mail. Oh, Dear Miss Fields, blah, blah, blah. If only you could send me five pounds, then I would be able to pay my milk bill. Always asking for something. This can wait. Stop now. The taxi will be here any minute. Monty, come with me. 
To Capri with you. Oh, come on. It'd be a hoot. A hoot? <laughs> yes. I don't know if I can play the fool 24 hours a day if you just want to have a hoot. And you speak the language. We can't speak the language, none of us. Us? Yes, well, I'm taking Mary to deal with all this post. And Mum and Dad are coming on a later boat. Well, I don't know. I am speaking to you from the cabinet room at 10 Downing Street. Passport. This morning, I will need my the passport. ambassador in Berlin handed the German government a final note stating that unless we heard from them by 11 o'clock, that they were prepared at once to withdraw their troops from Poland, a state of war would exist between us. I have to tell you now that no such undertaking has been received and that consequently this country is at war with Germany. I telephone the shipping company. You can get a later boat. Basil Bloody Dean. You can't stand him any. Shh. It's true. He's useful if a comedy director actually knows something about making people laugh. Or if he likes to laugh himself. The only thing that makes Basil laugh is his paycheck all the way to the bank. Hello, Gracie. Hello, Basil. Hello, Basil. Monty. Come in, Gracie. Uh, Miriam will get you a cup of tea, Monty. Out here. Can I get you anything, Mr. Banks? Tell me, Miriam, do you play cards? I've spoken to Olivier, Richardson, and now Gielgud. They'll all be bringing Shakespeare to the troops to help boost morale. Oh, right. I think you'll find our boys will take great solace from the words of our island's greatest poet. Once more unto the breach, dear friends, once more. Yes, well, Basil, I don't know so much about breaches. So why have you brought me here? Your audience loves you because they think you're one of them. I am one of them. You can turn any theatre into their front room. They feel at home with you. You put a smile on their faces. So instead of a bit of to be or not to be, I can give them a bit of diddly diddly dee. Precisely. Basil, will you please pay your secretary early this week? What? Why? Because she's losing at cards and I want my money. <laughs> will you leave us, please? I'm sorry, Miriam. It will have to be strip poker. <laughs> Look at these films we did together. And they made people laugh, too. I've been considering setting up impromptu picture houses in northern France. They don't want films. They want the real thing. Hmm. Now, I know you've been unwell. Oh, did you get my flowers, by the way? Telegram. Telegram. Right. Well, the plan is to start with a series of concerts in northern France, keep our boys' spirits up, get them singing and laughing. But it'll be a tough three or four shows a day. I can do it, Basil. Now more than ever. I have to. Gracie, be serious. Six weeks ago, you were on your deathbed. They say work is the best tonic. Schweppes is the best tonic. The best tonic drunk with gin on the terrace of a hotel in Capri. Capri will have to wait, Monte. I'm going to sing to our lads in France. And no one can stop me. A great welcome for Gracie Fields when she entertains our lads in France. Wish me luck as you wave me goodbye. Cheerio, here I go on my way. Come on, lads, you know the words. Not a tear, but a cheer, make it gay. Give me a smile, I can keep all the while in my heart while I'm away. Till we meet once again, you and I. Wish me luck as you wish. I can't wear this shirt. Look at me, I look like Chaplin. We've all got to wear a uniform. What would happen if we got captured, eh? They'd have you for a spy. A spy? Well, not a very good spy, but a spy all the same. I will write to my tailor, see if he can make me some of these shirts in linen. You insisted on coming along. Nobody forced you. 
Why did you come in the first place? Because I am a motion picture director and you are my star, and we have another picture to make together when this is over, and I would like to make sure that you live long enough to do it. Well, then, stop your mithering. My what? You heard. What's so funny? <laughs> You're a daft beggar, Mum. <laughs> I bet you were a naughty child, weren't you? <laughs> That's all you are, really, isn't it? A big naughty kid with a pencil moustache. No, that is not all I am. <laughs> it's a shame you never had children. You would make a wonderful mother. Well, it's not going to happen now, is it? So best not to think about it. 41 year old, with all your insides out. 41 years old with the rest of your life ahead of you. Hey, oh, come on, is it right? Must have gone for reinforcements. <laughs> I think maybe you have been recognized. <laughs> All right, lads. <laughs> Don't let's get in. It's you, isn't it? It is. It is, love. I told you it was. It's her. It's Gracie Fields. Sing us a song, Gracie. They said you were coming. This lot didn't believe it, but I believe it. Sing us a song, Gracie. No, don't be ridiculous. The cold air will ruin your voice. If you don't look after your voice, it will leave you forever. You're right. Maybe just one. Miss Fields, would you sing one for me? Remind me of my sweetheart. No, I don't half miss her, Miss Fields, please. Of course I will, lad. What's her name? It's Sally. I thought it might be. Would you sing Sally for me? Oh, oui. If you go out to sing in the cold, your voice will go before the concert. Laryngitis, bronchitis, pneumonia, double pneumonia. How long will you last? Look at him, Monty. Look at the little lad. How long is he gonna last, eh? Never mind me. How long is he gonna last? It's why I'm here. Come on, then, lads! Yay! You have to help me out. <laughs> Get around the bumper. <laughs> the skies were blue when I met you, Sally. You were my gal. My little pal, so true. You came along, made life a song, Sally. If I lost you, I wonder what I'd do. Sally. Don't go. 
lost much to keep in food. Don't need to worry about a hardy lass from the north. Yes, I do. <coughs> hey, come on. They say this war will be over by Christmas. We have to do this, Monty. We? You and me. We've got to stick at what we can do. This is what we are. This is what we're good at. I'm going to have to go back on. Don't encourage them. <laughs> I think I'll keep this on for the moment. It's you. Is it me or is it right gowd in here? It's you. Hey, one of the lads give me this. Merry Christmas, Monty. Come on. No, can you? Too weak even to pull a crack. Oh, shut up. Sorry to disturb you, Miss Fields. No. The lads in the bar sent me over. They're wondering if you join him, it being Christmas and all. She's eating her dinner. Eat your dinner. Get her some dinner to eat. After we've eaten, love, then I'll come over. Thank you, Miss Fields. <laughs> Not expecting a call, am I? No, it's for me. Stanley Laura. What does he want on Christmas Eve? Hello, Stan. Hi. How are you? Well, I don't know what I'm doing in France. <laughs> well, while you're talking on the telephone. No, Grace. No, 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 I am listening. One first. Yeah. Right, show up, honey. Never cry so much in all my life. Oh. I like it. Yes, it could be very fun. Yes. I am listening. Yes. Let me call you. Yes. And uh, how is your large friend?
you are. What happened to you? I lost my appetite. What are you doing? We're not leaving here till the day after tomorrow. I'm going back to America. America? What for? They've asked me to direct a picture. Laurel and Hardy. But there's a war on! Oh, OK. Is that why there are soldiers everywhere? Of course. And everywhere there's a soldier, there's another song, and another picture, and another ruined dinner. Well, I'm telling you, there's no war in Hollywood. You can't go, Monty. Why not? Because you keep me going. I can't do this without you. You make me laugh. Oh, but it's more than that. You... You and me, we you know. What? You and me what? Go on, say it. Please say it. Because it is killing me to be here in love with you. Miss Fields! <laughs> All right, lads. They shut the bar, Miss Fields. 10 to 12 on Christmas Eve and they shut the bar. Then go to bed! We wanted to see Christmas Day in with a song. Christmas. Did they bring your case down yet? The convoy leaves at nine if you want to get out of here. You're right, you know. You're better off in Hollywood. This isn't your war. Anyway, it'll all be over soon. And I'll be straight on that boat to Capri. The first time I went to Capri, as a young man, there was a boy out swimming. And the boy started struggling. He got pulled down by the current, so his father dived in to save him. But it was no good. They both got pulled down together. Imagine that, Grace. To try to save someone only to get dragged down with them. That's tragic. Well, it could have been, but... The boy, he suddenly reappeared. The sea spat him up and he swam safely back to the shore. And the father? The father, he vanished. And then he, he appeared, 50 yards down the beach. And he woke up to his son and he gave him the biggest bloody hiding you ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let me drown, Monty. Please
Don't let me drive her. Convoy to Calais is leaving now. Last chance to Calais, Mr. Banks. Can we take a picture? Of course you can have a picture. Come on. Come on. Come on. I never believe it's back home. You're keeping us going, Miss Fields. Oh, you shouldn't be here, Miss Fields. Why is that, then? You're a blinking film star. Film stars don't deserve to be in the cold and the mud. having <laughs> bombs dropped on them. I can think of plenty of do. Come on, lads. Let's show them. Hey. My brother's joined the army, and he's gone across to France with the biggest staff pedestrian in the world. Hey. The colonel says that's topping. Let's stop the big advance. With the biggest gas in the world! Then Gobbles saw him from afar and said to his old frau, Young George got his blood up, so the war's over! from Mama. Her eyesight's getting even worse. I should send them to live in California, shouldn't I? That house of mine is sitting there empty. Yes, with its lovely swimming pool and sunny veranda. <laughs> Listen to this. She says, Grace, these eyes of mine are going fast. I want to see you wed. Oh, really? Oh, not the vehicle! Oh, for God's sake, what now? Good afternoon, Miss Fields. I'm sorry to bother you. I'm afraid there's been a change of plan. You're going to have to turn back. What for? It's too late for a bloody encore. Mr. Basil Dean is recalling all ENSA artists back to Britain. He's what? He's what? Too dangerous? What does Basil Dean know, sitting in his blinking office back at home? Joseph Goebbels is after you, for heaven's sake. It's there in black and white. In German. I don't understand German, and neither do you. I understand what the officer just told you. Gracie Fields has for England earned enough to buy a hundred new Spitfires. She is a war industry and shall be treated accordingly. Do I look like a war industry to you? Yes. What about the concerts they're cancelling? What about our lads? We can't let them down. Whatever happened to the show must go on! Shh. They'll have to wait. Well, we can always tour the factories back at home, can't we? No, we shall be otherwise engaged. What are you mumbling about? Will you, Grace Stansfield, marry me, Mario Bianchi? <laughs> you daft but I can. What took you so long? <laughs> you sure you're doing the right thing? Well, Mum just showed me. Hold the cork still and twist the bottle. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. All a bit sudden, wasn't it? Hey, you're a misery, Harry. Another career move, is it, Hollywood director? I wouldn't give a damn if he was a funeral director. Mm, well, the security in that. Hey, uh, that's enough. There's a wall on. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, I hear you've joined up. Irish guards. Why not the Welsh ones? Irish guards have got a better piano. <laughs> Mrs. Stansfield. You know she's doing Drury Lane again with Maurice Chevalier. You like him, don't you, Mrs. Stansfield? <laughs> I, I wish she'd sing in English. No offence, Monty. No, no, no offence taken. Soon you, you will be able to call me son. <laughs> well, at least I'll see you wed before you ship me off to America. You know it's for your own benefit. The doctor said the climate will do your eyes no end of good. The first thing I'm going to do is get myself a new Stetson. You are not. I bloody am. Did you know, Monty, that's how we started courting, Jenny and I? She saw me walking through Rochdale wearing a cowboy hat and a boat on the cargo ships for California. And she thought I must be a film star. Santa Monica, Jenny, is the playground of the stars. The sunshine and the big house and the lovely swimming pool. Oh, I'm not going in no swimming pool. You used to swim in the canal, woman. Stick a couple of dead cats and an old bike in that pool, she'd be in it like a shot. You've had enough. <laughs> I had enough 40 years ago. They all end up like their mothers, Monty. Hard luck, mate. 
We don't do that in Rochdale. Come on, Fred, we're going. Is this what you're looking for, Dad? <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> hey, don't tell your mother. <laughs> Am I doing the right thing, Dad? You love him, don't you? Of course. He's a right gent in that grave. You know, he asked my permission and everything. I said, you're mistaking me for the man in charge here, Monty. <laughs> you better ask Jenny. Hey, you're not marrying him just because your ma told you to, are you? No, of course not. I learned my lesson. Do you remember that game you all used to play when you were a nipper back in Rochdale? You used to grab the back of the tram and run <laughs> hell for leather. <laughs> it's a wonder we weren't all killed. Used to run and run and run faster and faster and wait until the last possible moment before you let go. <laughs> well, you know, it seems to me that you've never stopped running ever since. Fred, you and me, we're going now. Uh, well, I've just opened another bottle of champagne, love. No, I said, leave them to it. I'll see you tomorrow, love. Come on, then, let's go. Come on, then. Just five minutes for the egg, please. Who are you? I'm Mrs. Bianchi. I like it, Mrs. Bianchi. Grace Bianchi. But where is old Mrs. Bianchi? Oh, her. Hold on. I miss her. Hmm. Ah, that's bad. Prima colazione! Ah! Where is my newspaper, old Mrs. Bianchi? Oh, ah, that, that's what I call service. Good God, did you see this? This is the hotel we stayed at in Ares, bombed. Seven people dead. What are the Germans doing bombing hotels? Innocent people. Obviously, they thought you were still there. Maybe someone really is looking after you. For the moment, you are safe here. They can't stop us, Monty. Goebbels, Hitler, none of them. Hello? It is? <laughs> well, thank you very much. Oh, I see. Right. Right. Well, thank you for warning us. I will, yes. Goodbye. What's wrong? Who was that? That was Lord Castle Ross on the phone, Monty. Ah, the old bug, eh? He's had a tip-off. Italy looks set to enter the war. Any day now. Mussolini with Hitler. Well, I will be the enemy then. Don't worry. I'm Italian, I surrender. This is no time for jokes, Monte. If you stay in England, you'll be interned. What did I do? You're Italian. That's a crime now. It will be, yes. You'll have to leave. I'm not leaving you. If I leave you to look after yourself, you'll work yourself to death. And what use would you be? Stuck in prison, eh? We could both go. Come with me to America. I can't. How would it look if I abandoned my country now? Why didn't you become an American citizen all those years ago? I didn't get around to it. None of us did. 
What do I miss? I think there's someone I can talk to. Someone who can sort this out. Who can you talk to? So how is the new boss? He's very kind to see my wife at such short notice. But she is a commander of the British Empire, which obviously counts for something in matters like this. Hey, up. We're going to Canada. Canada? I'll do a nationwide tour, and you'll be safe. So we'll stay together? You will stage and me playing poker in the wings? Churchill's sending me there to raise money for the war effort, not lose it on cards. I never lose. When the doctor gave you 50-50 chance to live, I went to Ladbrokes, they gave me two to one, you made me very rich. You're a fool. You're wonderful. Gracie Fields crosses the Atlantic to Canada. A brave undertaking in these dark and troubled times. Oh, welcome, committee's arrived. Welcome to Canada, Miss Fields. I'm honored to be here. You are Mario Bianchi? I am. I must ask you to accompany me, please, sir. Accompany you? OK. Where's the piano? <laughs> I'm arresting you, Mr. Bianchi, on behalf Oh, hold on. This is my husband. Arrest him? Why, what's he done? Mussolini has formally declared war on Britain, and Mr. Bianchi is therefore an enemy alien. We're not here in Canada, he's not. We're an allied nation at war, Miss Fields. Italian nationals are to be interned, so I'm afraid you will have to come with me, Mr. Bianchi. Well, I'm coming too. So that won't be necessary, Miss Fields. Oh, yes, it will. I've come here to do concerts at the behest of Winston Churchill, Prime Minister of England, and he made no mention of performing in prison. Miss Fields... If you arrest my husband, you arrest me. Or you go and get your superior to sort this out. I'm very sorry about all of this, Miss Fields. There was never any question of Mr. Bianchi being arrested. A misunderstanding. Thank you. So can we get on now? As per instructions, we are to guarantee your husband's safe passage to California. Please to accompany me on my tour. Once he has his American passport, then you will be free to travel together once more. No, this is completely unacceptable. My wife has been a very sick woman. She can't possibly do this alone. That's right. So the tour is cancelled. My wife is coming with me. Well, hold on, Monte. I, I'm... You should consider yourself fortunate, Mr. Bianchi, that special arrangements have been made for you. I'll let you say your farewells. He's assuming you're staying. I can't cancel all these shows, can I? You have to. You are coming with me to America, where everyone is welcome. I can't pull out of the tour. I need that money back at home. It's why I'm here. Yes. I thought we came to Canada so that we could be together. We did, but... But all you can think of is them, them, them. But you're not married to them. You're married to me. Come with me. Mrs. Bianchi. I can't let my country down. I can't forget all the love they've shown me. That isn't love. If that isn't love, then I don't know what is. No, maybe you're done. Goodbye, Gracie.
Mm. Stupid bloody man. Harry, where did you come from? That musical director, bloody rude he is. He ridiculed my accent the whole time. Our musical director? Harry, he's Welsh. He's as Welsh as you are. Well, what part of Wales is he from? Welsh Wales, just like you. Well, there's some parts of Wales that you might consider to be Welsh that I, as a Welsh man, wouldn't. Not necessarily. Oh, come here, you daft apus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Grace. I'm a little bit uptight, you know. It's the piles again, see? Oh, never mind your piles. Whatever happened to the Irish guards? Well, they've been transferred, and I thanks to you. Word got through that your new accompanist wasn't up to much, so here I am. And that piano they had in the guards was probably the best I'd ever played, so I hope you're happy with yourself. <laughs> no Monty? No. No Monty. I'll be doing 34 concerts here in Canada, and if they go well, I'll be straight back for some more. And all the proceeds will go to the Navy League? Every single penny. I'll be stony broke by the end of it, I can tell you. Oh, well, I can tell you, Miss Fields, we are most pleased to have you here. And by gum, I'm pleased to be here, love. <laughs> uh, do you think the Canadians will have a problem understanding your Cockney accent? <laughs> <laughs> Left the bloody hotel without me, didn't you? We just couldn't wait, you love. If I could This ask is you... Harry, my accompanist. Harry, uh, Miss Fields says that you've been her accompanist for 10 years. Yeah, well, that's a lie. I've been working for her for nine years, 11 months. <laughs> yeah, what are you laughing about? It's true. I gather your husband won't be joining you on the tour, Miss Fields. No, I'll be meeting him in California when I finished here. What do you think of Vera Lynn? She's a bonnie lass. They've started calling her the Force's sweetheart back in England. Yes, well, she's a lovely young thing. Mm. One last question. Mr. Churchill recently announced that the Battle of Britain has begun over the skies of England. Do you have a message? for everyone so many miles away back home. Yes, tell them I'm working as hard as I can to raise money that will keep them safe. And I'll be back with them as soon as humanly possible. Uh, uh, Miss Fields, some of the English papers are suggesting no. it isn't patriotic for you to be uh, here right now doing concerts when people are dying back in England. Bye-bye. Uh, Miss Fields. Will that be all for today, ma'am? Yes, thank you, Guy. He reminds me of that fellow who used to work for you. Years ago, a big fellow. I don't remember. Oh, well, no, you couldn't, uh, you couldn't move for young men in them days. Aye, and all of them after one thing. Really? Yes. Miss Fields, I've got a song for you. <laughs> Miss Fields, please sing my song. I had to hire that big fella to get out of the stage door. Uh, like an ape he was, like a gorilla, massive. He only let you in because he thought you were a messenger boy. Hey, no, no, because even he could see my genius. <laughs> Seventeen-year-old, scrawny, with your thick spectacles. Hey, and a song that you bought on the spot. Oh, that's true. I sang it that very night. hate you for the agony and pain that I've been through, for, for the, the sorrow, sorrow and the rain. That's just what, what I mean when I say I hate you. I despise, I despise every, every little thing, thing that you do. You'll find out what, what I say is only true. true. How much I hate, hate you. you. How could you write that, eh? When you're only 17. I would have told you. Genius. But how did you know about life? From listening to songs, I suppose. Well, same as me, then. Just listening to songs and singing them back over and over. So you never had your heart broken. No, of course not. Well, I, I was only 17, wasn't I? We've sung about the lot of it, haven't we, Harry? Things that have never happened. Places we've never even been. I must have sung I love you a hundred thousand times or more. It's what people want to hear. Yes.
It is, you're right. It's what people want to hear, so it's what we do. Singing and making noises. Have you ever been in love, Harry? I think it's, um, I think it's time we went to bed. Yes, I suppose it is. They're not so clever in Isha, sorry, are they, Guy? No, ma'am. How sad and disappointed I am that you, Gracie Fields, should run off with your wog husband in our hour of need. He is a well-known fascist, and I believe he was once a member of Al Capone's gang. He's not a wog, you silly fool. He's a wop. <laughs> Some people. They seem to know that in Cheam and Bogner and Stroud and Penzance. Why don't they know it in Isha? They're going to throw rotten eggs at me in Reading. And in Hitchin, they're going to hang me from the highest... Is that how you spell bow? No. Man. And there's no Y in Dago either. <laughs> <sighs> Three days now. Three days since I've had a satisfactory movement. Good morning, Harry. Uh, I got halfway through the stocks and shares before I finally gave up. Oh, no, I wouldn't look at that if I were you. Talking about no. you, to you. Stuff and nonsense, all of it. What the heck? Well, there, I told you not to read it. Miss Gracie Fields has fled England with her Italian husband and an estimated £100,000 in cash and a further fortune in jewellery. How ridiculous can you get? How can they print such rubbish? There's a war on, for heaven's sake. What are you looking at me like that for? Well, did you? Of course I bloody didn't. It's a damn lie. Is it? It is. Oh, well, I thought it was. It's a load of rubbish, and you know it. It's only see five or six next week. See you. Pounds. Why hasn't your husband been in prison? Because he's done nothing wrong. And neither have I. If I've done anything wrong, then I will go home and put it right when I've finished here. But I'm here on a tour and I'm getting on with it. Because there's people need a smile putting it back on their faces. I don't need you lot of notice, but there's a war on. Good idea that you're here, your husband. Miss Fields, Miss Fields, one more question, Miss Fields. Speak to them, I've nothing to hide. Uh, your husband is a fascist. Did you know that when you married him? He's no more of a fascist than me. Are you a fascist? No, I mean he's no more of a fascist than me or the king of... The king of England. Oh, King Cole, I don't know. Al Capone. <laughs> I said old King Cole. Your husband was a member of Al Capone's gang. Were you aware of that? Al Capone? My husband was a Keystone cop. I don't suppose you've ever been booed off before, have you? No, I haven't. And I don't intend to start now. Just think of the number of times you stopped the applause with that Aaron boy whistling on. Every blinking time. And we all told you, Archie, Bert, everyone, let the applause ride. Because one day, you know, the applause might dry up of its own accord. Oh, thanks, Harry. I knew I could rely on you. Ladies and gentlemen, next up on tonight's film, all the way from England... Britain, damn you. Gracie Fields. What's the matter? Has someone died? Not yet. 
I was going to sing, he's dead, but he won't lie down. But I'd hate to cause offence. Can you sing far, far away? I'm sorry, love, I'm a bit deaf. What was that? There will always be an England. There will always be an England. Let's hope so, love. That's why I'm here. Sing it. Sing there will always be an England. <laughs> Okay, so you put this in your newspaper. Are you listening? I am not a British citizen, and it is my own money. My wife and I follow the usual procedure by making regular application for permission to take our money with us. It is just because I am Italian that they are trying to make things disagreeable for Miss Fields. I wish they would cease. She has been giving generously of her time and talents. If they bother us any more, I'm going to telephone to her to come home and live like a normal person. Hello? Why the hell have you stuck your oar in? Gracie. You've made the whole situation a hundred times worse. Gracie, calm down. Oh, Go! But believe it or not, I won't stand by and see you humiliated by these idiots. It's my business. Don't interfere. Crazy. I am your husband. I can't ignore my wife being called a traitor. A traitor. This is what they are calling you. They're only calling me a traitor because I married you. Well, if that's how you feel, then maybe you should have thought twice about marrying a wop in the first place. Why did you marry me? My mother told me to. Maybe you should do what I tell you. Well, maybe I don't want anyone telling me what to do anymore. No, you're right. Maybe you don't. You don't need me. You don't need anyone. You're on your own. Oh. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I have with me Miss Gracie Fields, all the way from England. Gracie, welcome to Iowa. Gracious. Is that where we are? <laughs> it most certainly is. So, you've been on tour for quite some time now. How is it? It's been fantastic, Joe. The people have been wonderful, and the audiences are terrific. Well, I am very pleased to hear that. You're probably better off here in Iowa, because I believe that some of the newspapers back in Britain are calling you a traitor. Actions speak louder than words, I was always taught, Joe. Which is why I'm here, to raise awareness in the good old US of A, because we need your help. We're counting on it. What kind of reception do you expect when you return home? Well, I'm not going home yet. I've got plenty more work to do here. We've got concerts all over the place, here, there, and everywhere. You must be a little scared to go back to Britain, huh? I don't think so. I miss all those wonderful people back at home. I miss their love and devotion. And I'll get back to them as soon as I can. Scared? Why would I be scared? Well, I was thinking of the bombing of your country, Miss Fields. I'd be scared. I'd be happier to be here. Now, you're going to sing for us tonight, am I right? That's right, Joe. I'm going to sing Looking on the Bright Side. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Gracie Fields with Looking on the Bright Side. And we're off here. Gracie, thank you very much. 
And may I say that is quite an accent you have. <laughs> Thank you. And may I say, so do you. I was expecting something a little more mid-Atlantic. Mid-Atlantic. In the middle of the ocean. Drowning. I'm looking on the bright side, though I'm walking in the sheet, sticking out my chest, hoping for the best, looking on the bright side of life. I'm waiting for the right tide, and if luck comes to my aid, giving me a break, I shall be awake, looking on the bright side of life. Today I'm in the shadow. A minute, will you guys? The clouds will lift and let the sun shift over to me. Are you Gracie Fields? Yes, love, I am. I'm looking on the bright side. Though today's all care and strife, I can wear a grin, sticking out my chin, looking on the bright side of life. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Is that tea or coffee? I don't know. Uh, I think it's today's tea that smells of yesterday's coffee. Or maybe vice versa. Oh. I can't live like this much longer. No, neither can I. A proper cup of coffee. My own bed. Or maybe even someone else's. Is there something you're trying to tell me, Harry? You're not courting at last, are you? No, I'm not. I'm still only writing songs about it, aren't I? The thought of that made me unhappy this morning. I just don't want to let life pass me by. What's that film called that you did? Which one? I don't know, that's why I'm asking you. What happened in it? I can't remember. <sighs> I think you saved the day. I always save the day. Maybe there was a dog in it. Keep smiling. Well, what happened in that one? I milked a cow, I got chased by dogs, I nearly drowned. I did a tour with tramps. Then I saved the day. No, 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 it wasn't that one. You were... Uh, <laughs> you did the Apache dance. Queen of hearts. Queen of hearts. directed me in. Silly beggar. He put a pile of newspapers under my seat on the first morning. Then he set fire to them. <laughs> I should have known. <laughs> yeah. Queen of Hearts. I like that one. <laughs> you got the fella at the end for once, didn't you?
you have me, I'll always cling to you. You have me, I'll always sing to you. Life gave us our awful blow, but my dear will live to show the world what love can do. Try to have a nice romantic honeymoon and end up having a big fight instead. Oh dear. Oh, don't worry, it's a comedy. Doesn't sound so funny. Oh, it's funny. I wrote it myself. What happens in the end? I don't know yet. Did you get my card? I sent you a card. Our Gracie. I should have known you would never be my Gracie. I am your Gracie. Really, I am. Think how many of these you have given away over the years, thousands. That's the last one. I'm going to pack it all in. Why? For you. Impossible. I can do it now. I know I can. I could never have thrown it all in before. I was too frightened. Running for my life. Couldn't stop. But I'm not frightened anymore. Gracie. Because I've got you. I don't have to be Gracie Fields with you. And just be me. Gracie, you said it yourself. This is what we do. This is who we are. If you stop performing, you would die. There you go, Monty. You're Gracie. I love you, Monty. I want to be Mrs. Bianchi. Well, please, just once. It's Bianchi. tell you how wonderful it is to be back now I've finished my little war job. It started so long ago in France, then Canada, then I toured America for British war relief. Then it was Honolulu and the Fiji Islands, through to Australia and New Zealand, through Borneo and New Guinea, before we joined the Americans, and then we did all through the Philippines and right up to Okinawa. I say I want to retire, but nobody takes any notice of me. But I suppose as long as my... Keeps working. I'll keep following it. Cheerio, everybody. And God bless all of you. <laughs> now the war is over, how does it feel to be back here at the London Palladium? Grand, lad. It feels grand. But you live on the Isle of Capri now? That's right, with my husband. Husband, writer, faithful retainer. Ten minutes. OK. I'll leave you to it now. Thank you, Miss Fields. Thank you. Miss Fields? Yes, love? Do you, by any chance, remember getting stuck in the mud in northern France in November 1939? And a bunch of British soldiers helped push you out? Yes, I do. 
And a little lad asked me to sing Sally for him. That's right. I wonder what happened to him. Oh, don't you worry. He's fine. Thank you. Thank you. be pleased to know the train has successfully left the station oh that's a weight off my mind Harry what are you talking about he means he's just succeeded in moving his bowels ladies and gentlemen Miss Gracie Fields come on Harry lad do your stuff <laughs> 